This week I spent a, a few days with uh, Andy and Gary Tappenden um, at what we call fish camp. And it was at fish camp uh, that I was working on my uh, message. But I hope it doesn't sound fishy to you. That's the best I got for a joke, you know. <laughs> Last week, Dennis Har he had some jokes. But, uh, you know, he's been around. He's been doing a long time. So, me, no jokes this morning. But I've been thinking uh, most of the week of, about last week's message. Dennis Hart brought this message, your number, entitled The Power of One. Who remembers that from last week? Yeah, yeah. And did that, did that stick with you? Did you find that that, that was working on your mind and, and given that some, some thought this week? I, I hope so. And I hope that you spend some time thinking about how God is using you to, to build up his kingdom and how he is using you to continue to draw the unbelieving people to himself. How he's using you to carry out his purposes. Isn't that his ultimate purpose for us? Is to um, use us as a vessel to both bring him glory and bring the unbeliever onto himself? Do you think those are probably the two most important things that we have that God has given us to do? To bring him glory and to bring others into that relationship with him. That's what I think. That's what I think we're supposed to do. I think that's our calling. And, and I think it's a good sign when we spend, we go from Sunday to Sunday chewing on the message that was delivered. When we chew on that all week, I just believe God is at work in us. One of the things I found myself considering about this power of one message, um, it was more of a question, what, what drove these people to this level of commitment? What, what was it about these people? What was it about situation? What was it about this space and time that drove them to this position where they had great influence? God can use any one of us, but, but Pastor Har shared about some people that he used very specifically, and I thought there had to be, there had to be a difference in that person, in that situation, in that moment of time. I wondered if the difference then and today, God's use of his people if it boils down to, to our willingness, our faithfulness, and our obedience. If our willingness, our faithfulness, and our obedience, our obedience play a role in the manner in which God will use us. As I thought about those things, the parable of the talents, you're all familiar with the parable of the talents, but that parable of the talents came to mind where, where one was, was given five and one was given three and one was given one. And the first two uh, used their talents and invested them and, 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 and reaped a, 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 a return. And God pleased. They had taken what they had they were faithful with it. They were obedient with it. They brought it back to the God, to God, the one who had given it to them, with not just what he had given, but more. We're familiar with that parable, are we not? Sure we are. And the, there was the person with the one talent did nothing with it, put it in the ground, right? God uh, was not pleased. I wonder if... God's calling, does it increase in our life 
does God's calling increase in our life as we are responsive to him, as we are obedient to him, and as we are faithful to him? Do we develop a greater spiritual sensitivity to the things of God, to the moving of the Holy Spirit? That the more we give ourselves to, the more sensitive we become. It's a question, church. I think I know the answer. I think the answer is yes. I think as we're faithful with a little, God gives us a greater sense of use. As we're faithful with three talents, he gives us more talents. Are you with me, church? I want to have that sense of use, heavenly purpose in my life. I want to get tuned in to those Holy Ghost nudges, people. I want to hear, I want to feel, I want to sense the Spirit moving in my life and have the courage to respond with, yes, Lord. Sometimes, yes, Lord, gets a little spooky, but I know in whom I can trust. We're in that boat together. Our God is a faithful God, amen? Last week, Melody shared a little bit of, about the, the, her faithfulness when the Holy Spirit moved upon her in a way that, that suggested she share with a man the value of persistent prayer. Those were your words, weren't they? Wasn't that the issue, Melody? Persistent prayer. The, this, young, this young man, a believer, was stuck in his dream. He had, he had done the, the work. He had done some preparation. He was afraid to take the test. Not once was he feared. Not twice was he feared. Three times he stood there fearful, too afraid to move. And Melody spoke into his life about persistent prayer. And she did so amidst her own great personal sorrow. She was there, if I recall, because of her mother's passing. And she was there in preparation. I assume in preparation for her burial. But it, her feelings... The situation didn't trump God's plan. Was that faithful with a little? I think so. That was faithful with a little. We can see in Melody's testimony God at work. Amen? We see God's hand in Mike's testimony about the quickness of his healing. We see God's hand in things around us. We see God's hand in the building up of the body. We see God's hand. We see God at work. We sing about, if, if I'm not get dead, he's not done. Right? Don't we sing that song? Yeah. That we have seen, have we not, examples where the Spirit of God moves in mighty ways. He works in ways that we don't necessarily understand, we don't even necessarily look for, but we see him at work. We see him at work all around him. We have seen the way maker, have we not, make a way when there was no way? Or do we just sing about it? Have we seen our God at work? Do we just sing about him being the way maker? We have witnessed the miraculous people. We have witnessed healings. We have witnessed God's intervention. We have witnessed God's provision over and over and over. Have we not? We, re we have been the witnesses of God's work. If, if I asked each of you, to come up and, and to share your personal salvation story or to, to share an example of, of your witnessing God at work, we would raise a mighty hallelujah, would we not? Sometimes it's God blocking things that we see. Sometimes God, we, we face 
things that would be catastrophic, but God steps in and he blocks it, and we say, whoa, that was close. That was a close one. Sometimes people, tell me if I'm wrong, tragedy or destruction knock upon our door, but God blocks it. Our God is a faithful God, and we have seen his faithfulness day in and day out. God blocked it. Amen. We have seen God at work. We believe, don't we, that he did it before and that he'll do it again? That we believe, don't we, that he set us free and that he will make us free? That he will, if we will, if we will surrender, he will keep us in that state? If we will confess our sins before him, he is faithful to forgive us our sins, is he not? Was our forgiveness a one-time done deal? I don't think so. I think our God remains faithful. We agree, don't we, that if God, we believe that God's not done working yet. So, How do you take what we know that God's not done working yet, that we have seen the miraculous? How do we take that God's not done yet, along with Jesus' words of greater things than these will you do, you will do? How do we take that and carry out God's purpose? How do we take those words of the Almighty God and make the spiritual splash that we are called to? I think willingness plays a role. I think obedience plays a role. I think faithfulness plays a role as we are empowered by the Holy Ghost to make a splash that honors our God. The size of our pond is not an issue. The circle of our influence is not the thing that matters greatest to God. The number of lives that we come into contact with isn't the issue. It's our willingness. It's our obedience. It's our faithfulness that leads us to our spiritual splash. Now do you hear a little fish camp in there? You hear that splash? That's one of those bass that Andy was casting for. Spiritual splash. That's what I think we're supposed to do. We're supposed to make a spiritual splash. I believe we're all called to make a spiritual splash. Let's put some ripples on the water, people. Let's put some ripples. God didn't say that you have to do a cannonball, but put some ripples on the water. God didn't say that we all had to do a cannonball, Steve, but maybe you do. He did say, and I'll quote him on this, make a splash. Make a splash. Because that caused that ripple to go out across the pond. That, That ripple comes from your actions based in your willingness, based in your obedience, based in your faithfulness. What? Some of you aren't sure that that Jesus actually said, make a splash? You must have skipped that verse. In mine, I read that in the Great Commission. Go make a spiritual splash, Daniel, in all the world. Go make a spiritual splash. Well, I also think that that go make a splash was part of what Jesus was saying when he said, you'll do greater things than I. The Great Commission greater things. Yeah, amen. Yeah, hey, we got uh-huh, we got a young Pentecostal going over there. Yeah. Daniel, 
You're doing well. You're doing well. Bethany? So when, when John the Baptist was imprisoned in about uh, to lose his head, literally, he sent his disciples. You guys know this. He sent his disciples to find Jesus. And Tom, what he said to him is go ask him, are you the one, right? Are you the one or should we be looking for another? Are you the one, Jesus, or should we be looking for another? Listen to how Jesus responds to that in Luke chapter 7, verse 22. He says, go back and report to John what you have seen and what you have heard. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is preached to the poor. Sounds like Jesus has been making a splash. Amen? Amen. For us, the blind receive their sight. For us, the lame walk. For us, the lepers are healed. Jesus was doing it for us. For us, the deaf hear. For us, the dead are raised. Good news is preached to the poor. To the poor. It was quite a splash. He said to John's disciples, look, look at the things that I'm doing. The proof is in the pudding. Look at the things. Go back and tell him. Look at my actions. When we, as Christ's followers, do the good works that God has prepared for us to do ahead of time, we bring Christ glory. And as we bring Christ glory, we are making a spiritual splash. Changed lives bring Christ glory, do they not? Changed lives bring Christ glory. Changed mouths bring Christ glory. You don't know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Changed mouths bring Christ glory. Changed priorities bring Christ glory. Can I get a witness? Your actions make a splash. Your words make a splash. Changed priorities in your life make a splash. The blind see when they see the difference in you that God has made. Amen? The blind see when they see it in you. The deaf hear when you are now speaking words of encouragement instead of mumbling, grumbling, and complaining. A critical spirit, a critical spirit conveyed the, the entire body, leprosy. As if it was leprosy, that critical spirit spreads through the person's life. But you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't had a moment of that at this stage in your life, I'm going to question your truthfulness. Because, you know, there are times when we get to grumbling. There are times when we get to complaining. There are times when we have a critical spirit. But Jesus changes that, does he not? He gives us a hope. He gives us, he, he kills that critical spirit and gives us a hope, an eternal hope, if you will. Take a, Eternal hope takes its place. And oh, what a splash. Look, look at those ripples now. Look at those ripples now. I'm thinking cannonball, baby. You know, God's changed some things in my life. 
God's changed some things in my life. And I, and I pray that as a result of those changes, there are ripples that have gone out. As I make my spiritual splash, the ripples go out. And every once in a while, I get a cannonball in there. And I want to invite you into that. Visualize if you can about 13 teenagers on the end of Bonnie and Shorty's pool. They're getting ready to do a cannonball together. That could be us. Have you seen that wave? Have you seen what happens when those teenagers or Daniel do that cannonball together? Come on. Am I lying? No, it's a great and mighty splash. That's us. That's the church. Together, 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 together we make, make that splash together. Before I get too carried away, some of you might think it's too late for that, um, let's, let's turn to the Word of God to see if what I'm saying is true or not. If you joined me in Luke 7, you don't have far to go because I'm just backing up a little bit to Luke 6, verses 43 through 45. Let's see about this parable that Jesus gives us about the good fruit that comes from the overflow of the heart. I, I find it interesting that as Christians, you know, we, we talk about how we have Jesus in our heart. We talk about uh, having a circumcised heart. We're, we're we talk about having been given a new heart through Jesus as, as we call upon his name for salvation. In this parable, Jesus is speaking about our fruit, which, which I think is our part of our splash, and how that comes out of the overflow of our heart. They're out of our heart. Join with me. Verse 43 reads like this. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Out of the overflow, God does change our heart. Amen. Clearly, it is the Holy Spirit at work transforming us we that we can bear fruit prior to our salvation we produced fruit but it was fruit like greed fruit like selfishness fruit like lust fruit like envy but transformed by the spirit of god we produce a good fruit a kindness gentleness, faithfulness, patience, self-control, fruit that, that gives itself away. Part of our fruit would be using our talents to build up the kingdom. Part of our fruit would be giving of our time to serve the body of Christ. Part of our fruit, Pat, would be volunteering for that cleaning crew. Part of our fruit would be back teaching the, the young kids um, about Jesus. Part of our fruit might be just loving our kids, taking them fishing. It might just be looking for opportunities to speak of the goodness of God and to tell our kids about how God has moved in our own lives. Fruit like giving of ourselves, giving of our time, using our gifts to serve the kingdom. These things are part of serving the kingdom of God instead of serving the little kingdom of self. 
from the overflow of the heart comes our fruit. Have you ever heard, or, or maybe you've even said to yourself, my heart wasn't in it. Maybe in response to um, a poor performance or, or a, a failed attempt. My heart, my heart wasn't in it. I would dare guess that there have been times, even in our walk with Christ, when our heart wasn't in it. Inconsistency is something, it's a part of human nature that we will likely battle all of our days here on earth. But we are not alone in doing this battle against inconsistency. The big deal about inconsistency is how it impacts upon our splash. Discouragement, complacency can easily set in. And then old undesired behaviors begin to reoccur. You know, I wish that none of you had experienced such a thing, but I guess like me, you probably have. That there have been times when you've gotten discouraged. There have been times when maybe you've gotten complacent. Even in your walk with Christ, your heart wasn't in it. And what happens is that old junk, old junk begins to make its way to the surface and impacts our splash. And bro, that fruit ain't sweet. Are you with me? So what can we do as believers so that our heart is in a place such that our fruit is sweet, such that the, the good works that God has prepared for us ahead of time are our desire, our, our, our pursuit. What can we do as believers? How can we nurture our hearts so that we will have a great influence on those around us for heaven? What can we do to, to guard? What can we do to take care of our heart? Surely we've all heard garbage in, garbage out, right? So we know what not to do. We know what not to do. We know that garbage in, garbage out is legit. We might be on fire for the Lord, but if we stop feeding that fire, we all know what happens. You've all sat around a campfire. If nobody's willing to stick another stick on the fire, what happens? Eventually what happens is it burns down, doesn't it? We need to feed that heart. We need to feed that fire of God in our lives. Amen. So, Bruce, what do we do? How do we go about feeding that fire? I'm sure I could get ten examples, but I'm going to share about five with you real quick. Of the Word of God, taken in the Word of God would be a mighty stick on that fire, would it not? Prayer would be a mighty stick on that fire, would it not? What keeps the fire of Christ burning in your life? Fellowship. Fellowship. Gathering together here in the house of God. A time to worship together, a time to say, I am his and he is mine. A time to join hands, a time to join hearts. That sticks coming together to keep that fire burning. Why else do we come and join? We could pray at home, we could worship at home, we could sing some songs, we could watch Elevation Worship, and there's nothing wrong with any of that. But we come together, don't we, people? We come together in the name of God to worship. And it's that fire of God in each other that we help keep burning. And that then becomes our splash. Are you with me? Can you hear me? <laughs> Andy's supposed to, like, dial me down when I get too loud. But the dial not go that far. So what can a believer do? The word, fellowship, prayer. Remember in Acts chapter 2 when the church was just exploding? And it, it, it says, and they, the church, they, they gave themselves an explanation to what was happening here. They 
They gave themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. They, they, they somehow knew, even as young believers, that they needed each other to keep earning. They needed each other. They needed together. They needed that togetherness to make that splash on the world that God was calling them to. And it's the same for us. If we're going to complete the work that God has begun in us, if we're going to have that splash that God has called us to, I believe we need each other. Other ways to keep that fire burning is that, that sweet heavenly music, that sweet time of, of worship, both privately and, and corporately. The um, things like uh, confession. Who, who likes confession? But there's a sweetness in it. There's a, it's a stick that keeps the fire burning. When we get on our knees, when we come before God and confess our shortcomings, confess how we blew it, confess our sins, it's a, it's a way to prepare for what is before us. When, when you have a time where you just acknowledge your need for God, God works, doesn't he, in your heart, drawing closer to him? When you acknowledge your need for Jesus, don't you think he draws you just a little bit closer? And in that, that drawing, aren't we a little bit more prepared for what comes next? What comes next in our day? Aren't we just a little bit more trouble that, that awaits us? Aren't we just a little bit more prepared? A little bit more, a little, little bit quicker to, to acknowledge my need for Jesus and Lord sometimes shut my mouth. And other times, help me to speak. Help me to bring you glory. If I've communed with the Lord, Aren't I more apt to, to be sensitive to those Holy Ghost nudges? Yeah. It puts us in a good position to splash. Being faithful. Being faithful with a little or being faithful with an abundance keeps us humble. Think about it. If, if we will give to God what God has given to us, does that not write our heart with his heart? Doesn't it connect us just a little bit more? When our hands are closed to God, I think I'm a little less useful to the kingdom. But when my hand begins to open, I think God opens my heart as well. Again, I probably become more sensitive to the Spirit of God when I'm willing, when I'm obedient, and when I'm faithful. You're in a position, I'm in a position, to glorify God with our splash. Your splash is not always seen by others. Sometimes it's a private splash. Amen? But you see, you see how your heart is different. And out of the overflow of your heart, you produce fruit. Let me close with a return to that parable. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart and makes a mighty splash. 
The evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Our challenge is to make a splash for the kingdom of God. That out of the overflow, out of the overflow of our heart, that we would speak in a way that honors our king, that glorifies the one who hung on that cross for you and me. We've all got a splash to make. We're called to it. Are you willing? Are you obedient? Will you be faithful? Let's pray. Sweet Jesus, may we unto you May you continue to, to purify us. May you continue, God, to uh, transform us. May you help us to be more sensitive to your spirit and to the leading of your spirit so that in all of that, we can bring you glory so that in the things that we do in the manner in which we do them, and the things that we say and how we say them, that God, deaf ears are open, blind see, because they see you in us, they hear you in us. God, may we be a people that's different than, than we once were, because we have experience your goodness and your transforming power. May we go out into this world and may we make a splash. God, may we make a splash that honors you. In your name, Christ, I pray. As you go out, as you go out into this day, make a splash. Think about it in a in a just a very practical way. What would God have me do when he answered when Jesus answered John the Baptist's disciples? He told him to go tell him the things that I've done. If we just think it and never do anything with it, the world won't see that it is of God. Let's make sure they don't miss that. Amen? Amen. Have a great week. Uh, Mickey and I are going to be gone for a few weeks, but uh, hey, uh, know that uh, good Lord willing, we'll be back, and uh, we're just going to go kick up our heels for a while. But um, make sure you gather together. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Pastor will be back next week. Make sure you welcome him in a mighty way. Thank you. Good to be together this morning. Amen.